Greetings everyone, coming to you from the Church of God of Prophecy in Arcadia, Florida. We'll be speaking today on the title, Arise and Go. <clears throat> this is from the sixth, uh, excuse me, the ninth chapter of Acts, verses 3, 4, and 6. The pastor today preached a tremendous message on this, and what caught my eye was the words there, uh, that we'll speak of, Arise and Go. And uh, if you like these messages, type in Arcadia and the initial C-O-G-O-P. You can also find us on Facebook. We have a number of qualified ministers that just really preach and teach the Word of God. So we're in the chapter 9 of Acts, verse chapter 9, verses 3, 4, and 6. It's a well-known message that's been preached many times, and as the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, eliminates these, these scriptures to a born-again Christian, we can always find new messages, new ways of, of preaching from those scriptures that the Holy Ghost illuminates us to. So this is, uh, this is what I got out of... Uh, Part of the message today it was a powerful message the bible says as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven now it's talking to saul here saul of course was on his way to persecute the church and to find and kill whatever the case may be as many christians as he could possibly do so the world looks upon you and i a lot of times as uh, friends and neighbors and and, uh, and family members think of us as weird. You know, they don't want to kill us in a lot of cases. Uh, they just want us to not talk about Jesus so much. And uh, I had someone tell me one time, boy, you talk about heaven an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, what else is there for me to talk about? I enjoy animals, I enjoy life, but what else is there for me to talk about but heaven? Verse 4, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why, perse why persecutest thou me? Now, Paul was walking, we'll talk about that, how the Jewish custom was at that time, which Paul was a, a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin, and he fell right into the dirt. He fell down. There, he wasn't on a paved road. He was on probably a dirt road. We had those in Kentucky. And uh, a lot of times you could walk in the summertime, uh, if you were barefoot in a young uh, uh, child, boy or girl, you could feel that dust come up between your toes. Now, Paul probably had on shoes, no doubt. But he probably fell just like a ton of bricks to the ground. And the Lord said, why are you persecuting me? You know, a lot of times we want to say, to our, to our friends and neighbors, to ourselves maybe even, why are you persecuting me? I haven't done anything to you. Why did you make such a smart remark about the Bible or about God, knowing that I'm a Christian and knowing that, that would offend me? Well, don't let that bother you any because it doesn't bother God. He doesn't just stand up and say, I can't believe that so-and-so said that. God is not moved by what the world says. God is moving in his own path on his own time. Uh, we see in verse 6 that, well, let's back up a little. Saul had probably been walking and not riding a horse. And the reason how I arrived at that is the strict Jewish, strict Jewish uh, laws were adver uh, adverse to riding horseback. The strict Jew didn't want you to ride horseback. That was a mode of travel which was popular with the Romans. You can check that Jewish outline if you'd like. But they didn't like for individuals to ride horses. They uh, wanted them to walk whatever the transportation may be other than a horse. In verse 6, And he trembling saw, and Manish said the Lord, and the Lord said to him, why, why, do you, what do I have to, why do you do this to me? And the Lord said unto him, and here's the title of my message, Arise and Go. That's in the sixth verse, Arise and Go. I picked that up out of the scripture this morning. And I began to think how we as Christians, when we were first 
redeemed, saved, we couldn't just wait to tell everybody about how much we love the Lord, how we just wanted we just wanted the whole world to see the light of the Lord. And as time goes along, sometimes we get a little indifferent. We don't, well, I don't want to say anything offensive. Well, of course you don't. But to speak of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in the proper environment, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, that's not going to Walmart and getting up on a soapbox and preaching. That's just not wisdom. So, but as time goes along, we want to kind of back away a little bit and think a little more. Uh, and so he was told to go into the city and that he would be told there what to do. When we're when we are, an interesting thought, when we are saved, there's already a calling in our life. It's already there. God doesn't wait to see what we're going to do. When a company hires you, they have a position for you. Now, you can move up in that company. I'm not talking anything other than that, than that company. You can move up. So when we're called, we have a calling in our life. God doesn't wait to see what we're going to do if it's going to work out to his purpose. So that one calling that's in everyone's life is to witness and to testify for Jesus Christ. Now, you don't have to be like Paul, have all these degrees. Uh, you don't have to go to college. Uh, my father was a pastor. He went to third grade, and boy, did he have the wisdom of the Bible. So God puts that into our life at conversion. So when we say, well, and we'll talk about that a little farther, but we all have a calling in our life, and that is to witness for Jesus Christ. So arise and go. Go means to proceed. Don't just sit there doing nothing. We see in Revelations where he talked about the Laodicean church. You're just sitting there lukewarm. It means to advance. Go means to advance. Begin, get underway. First get, when you first get saved again, you can't wait to tell the whole world about Jesus Christ. Move rather than just sit there. There's a terminology years ago in the, in the military. If it doesn't move, paint it. So we need to keep moving forward in our walk with Jesus Christ. Everything's all paid for. The, the bill is all there. All we have to do is just get the rewards of what Jesus did at Calvary. It means to start, to blast off, do something, set out. I remember a saying many years ago, the wise old Chinese man said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. So as Christians, each day are new steps for that day to draw closer to him. Get the ball rolling. Do Again, do something. Make headway. We don't need to always be depressed, oppressed, down, sulky face. Oh, I don't, I just don't know what the Lord thinks about me today. He thinks of you as his child. So when we make a mistake, when we sin, when we fall short, he doesn't cast us out. He doesn't throw us out with the, with the dishwater. He still loves us. Now, of course, repentance is a good thing because then it eases our mind and we come before God and say, I've really messed up this day. Have mercy upon me. So I've heard down through the years a statement, well, I've been saved all these years and I just don't know what the Lord wants me to do. I, I just don't know. Have you asked him? Have you prayed about it? Have you obeyed him? An example is, I want you to preach the word of God. No, no, I, that's, that's, I can't do that. Well, I want you to be a teacher. Sunday school teacher. I can't do that. I don't like standing up in front of people. And So if we make excuses, of course, God is just going to sit there. But that calling will not go away. No matter what calling we've had in our life, that includes being a Christian. In other words, we need to do the things that the Holy Spirit wants us to do. I saw today in church, two people will say, well, what is righteous? You know, the Bible speaks of righteousness. There's a self-righteousness, which is us, people thinking 
that we have done great works with God. That's not what righteousness is. The righteousness is living the life that God wants us to live. So this lady stood up today and gave a tremendous testimony. She said, I waited upon the Lord to send me up to be able to speak. And she came up and obeyed God. Obeying God is righteousness. That's what God wants us to do is to obey him. Not think about what we shouldn't do, but what we can do for him. And that goes to the fact that, believe it or not, I believe this. It, it does, in a lot of cases, that when we obey the Lord, like that lady did this morning, and our pastor preached such a tremendous message, that goes a long way with God. God owes no man anything as far as debt is concerned. So when that lady spoke up this morning, I'm going to clear that up, and spoke of righteousness, or spoke of righteous testimony, God was very well pleased with that. But he wants her to do more as the Spirit leads her. He will never ask us to do something we can't do. So when we first got saved, again, we wanted the whole world to know. But we, can, we can't in America be missionaries and not leave the state that we live in or the city we live in. We can go, I like to go to McDonald's, uh, whether it's right or wrong, I just, I just go there. And I will tell them, thank you, God bless. That's a testimony. You don't have to make a long drawn out speech about Jesus Christ and, and how everything works and, and take up everybody's attention because we want to do it with a spirit of wisdom. We say, God bless, thank you. That was nice of you. We know that there may be people in back of us. We don't want to tie up the whole thing with getting up on, again, a, uh, a stand and, and, and teaching unless the Lord tells us to. Mary Magdalene was the first uh, of the women to testify to Jesus after his, about Jesus after his resurrection. She was just so excited. The woman at the well. The Bible is just so full of stories of where people love to witness about Jesus and what he's done for them. The ten lepers, one of them turned back. So in closing, the Bible says in Matthew 7 and 20, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Now that was Jesus speaking. That was Jesus speaking. So when you feel like you should stand up in church and testify, and it, you know that feel it's the Spirit of God, testify, get to the point. Thank you, Jesus. In church, do the same thing. When you're out in public, do the same thing. Witness for Jesus. Keep it short and simple like the old saying. And hey, I ran in, I met someone the other day at, uh, at Cracker Barrel. And they said, boy, if you ever want to leave your church, you come to our church. It's a great little church. It's, we preach the word of God. And she even gave me the phone number to the church. I didn't ask for that. That's how much she appreciates being a Christian and promoting Jesus Christ. So I hope you've got something out of this. Pray for us and we hope to meet again. God bless.